Hi, how are you? I'm Annika McMahon. I'm an executive recruiter, career strategist, and co-founder of The Path to Promotion, where we help you find fulfillment and happiness doing work that you love. Today, I'm going to give you questions that you should ask your hiring manager at the end of an interview under four categories. The four C's. Now, do me a favor, and if you're not subscribed, please do subscribe to this channel. And if you do find the information I share with you today helpful, give us a thumbs up because it helps other people to find the video. In previous videos, I've talked about how to prepare for an interview. I've talked about how to answer interview questions really succinct, succinctly and well. And I've also talked about how to pitch yourself for executive level roles. You can see those videos in the links below. And having sat on panels for almost two decades, I can tell you when it gets to the end of the interview and the hiring manager or one of the panel members says, do you have any questions for us? And the candidate says, no, I'm happy. Or something simple like, when do you want the person to start? It's and then there's an overwhelming feeling of disappointment. A career choice is an important decision. Taking a new job in an organization that you haven't worked in before should be a really big deal. So if you don't have any questions to ask the hiring manager, it shows that you're really not placing enough value on yourself, you're not doing your due diligence, or really understanding that your career is important enough to ask the questions to make sure that the role is right for you. Now, in my previous videos, you've heard me say that you should be asking questions along the way, and that's absolutely true. But the end of the interview is the time for you to ask questions because up until now, the panel has spent time deciding whether you're right for the role, and now it's time for you to decide if the organization is right for you. Most of us work five days or more a week, and how you spend your time and where you spend your time should be really important to you. Those four categories are connect, culture, challenges and close. The first C is connection. You want to ask the person that you're going to report to something along the lines of why did you decide to work here? Now this is an opportunity for you to bond with the individual by learning about why they got hired by the company and what drew them there why they decided to invest their career in this business. This is going to give you a lot of insight, not in, only into their own decisions and their own decision-making matrix, but also into them as a person. The second question you want to ask is, what do they love about working here? It's really important to ask a positive question that lets your hiring manager talk about all the things that they love about the organization. This is going to be a great chance for you to connect, see, connect, and you're also going to be able to evaluate whether or not these sound like things that you actually care about as a person as well. Remember, these questions are designed for you to get insight as to whether or not this company is a good fit for you or not. So whilst they're positive and they're an opportunity for you to connect, it's also giving you a really good chance to evaluate whether the role is actually right for you. The second C, it's culture. You wanna understand the culture that you're walking into. Does this company go about business in a way that you respect and trust? Is it a company that you'd be proud to work there? Values can be read on a website, but how the company actually walks the walk can be discovered in the interview. The best question to ask to discover culture is this one. What do the people that work here that are the most successful in their roles do differently? Why has that person been successful in their role? This is going to help you really understand why, how being recognized in the organization as a high performer, and you want to listen very carefully to the answers of this one. Let me give you an example. If they give you, as an example, someone who got made partner or were promoted because they worked 80 hours a week and they achieved amazing things with no budget, is this the type of environment that you really want to be a part of? However, if they're describing innovation, talent, going above and beyond, these are the hallmarks of a great organization. It's especially great here if they can talk about promoting from within, so look for evidence of that as well. The second part to this question is to ask about staff turnover, and this can be a tricky question to ask because companies that don't have great staff turnover don't really like talking about it. So a way to get around this is to ask, what's the biggest reason why people who aren't successful in their roles don't work out? When you've hired a person, and they don't fit the culture, what are the things that they did differently? You can then segue into finding out how long the team you've been working are there. If they're all new people, but it's newly created roles, that's great. That means the organization is growing. If it's a whole group of people that have been there for a long time, that's a really good thing as well. You also wanna find out why the previous person left the role, and that can give you some really good insights into culture. The third, third C, it's challenges. 
Ask the hiring manager how they will measure success in the role. A good way to ask this is, if I was to start tomorrow and you were sitting down with me in three months and you were thrilled with my performance, what would I have delivered to you in this time frame? Do this again for six months, 12 months and three years. Now, this actually achieves two things. Firstly, it will let you know exactly what success looks like in the role and what is important to the hiring manager that you're gonna be reporting to. Secondly, it's a little psychological trick here. You are asking the panel to envision you in the role and being successful in the role. Without meaning to, they will start to picture you in the job and doing the job well because that is how they are framing their answer. So that's a good tip for you guys. Then ask what the biggest challenges are the company will experience this year and how this role will help to overcome or contribute to that. Again, what you're showing here is that you understand that you will need to contribute to the overall strategic direction of the business and how you will help them to solve a problem and alleviate a particular pain. These questions will also help you to decide if it's a role that you want to invest your time in or not. I have to say, if they cannot clearly articulate what they want the person to do, how will you know if you're being successful in the role? That's a big red flag for me right there because there will be no way for you to measure your own success, how you're making an impact, and how you're gonna go about asking for a raise or a promotion if they've got no idea what success looks like. The final C is closing. I love it when candidates at the end of an interview do two things. One is to ask a very powerful question. If there were some skills or experience that you think that I'm lacking to make me a perfect fit for the role, what are these? This is a very polite way to ask about shortcomings for yourself in comparison to other candidates that are being interviewed. And this does two things. Firstly, it gives you an opportunity to show that you don't think that you're absolutely perfect for the role. And it also gives you an opportunity, opportunity to talk about how you might address these shortcomings. Or they might say something that you actually do have skills in that you just didn't cover in the interview. So this is a great opportunity to make sure that they're aware that you can do the thing that they thought that maybe you couldn't do or that you've got a plan of how you would overcome these shortcomings. If you didn't ask this question, you're not going to be able to overcome that objection. Now finally, and only if you've been happy to the answers to the questions so far, you can express your interest in the role. I'd say something along the lines of, thank you so much for your time today. I am really interested in this opportunity and I think that could add a lot of value. What are your next steps in the process and what will be the timeline? It's awful to leave an interview not knowing when you're gonna get a phone call or how long the decision making process is gonna be. And as you know, job hunting takes up a lot of emotional energy. So having a time locked in that you know it's appropriate for you to follow up actually takes a lot of that emotional stress away. I've had so many of my friends and family members call me when they're going for jobs and they say, I had an interview on Wednesday and I haven't heard anything, should I follow up? And my answer is always, well, what is the time frame that they gave you? And most of the time the person's, uh, I don't know, I didn't ask that question. So asking that question will alleviate some of that emotional stress for you. Also, if you're expecting any other offers, this is the time to tell the hiring manager or the panel that this is your preferred option. It can sometimes make them move a little bit faster to, to offer, the, offer you the role if you've got other offers pending. Now, if they've asked the questions and you know it isn't the right fit, you can thank them for the time and let them know that the role isn't for you. It's absolutely okay to do that in an interview. And sometimes I've found that this can even lead to a better job offer or something that you're more suited to down the track. Now, I hope this video has been really helpful. Click the link to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And don't forget, you can also click the link to download our ultimate employee guide on how to get a promotion, a pay rise, or more perks at work. It's free. And if you haven't watched the other videos in our interview series, you probably want to watch them now if you've got one coming up. Thanks for watching. I'm Annika McMahon.